The leader of Generation 104 seems to be an S45 species again, but it just looks like a Tringle with a node attached by really weak muscles that doesn't do anything. Now let's push this simulator to its limits. Let's go as far as possible. Okay, the tetrahedra now covers 90% of the population. That's quite a monopoly. For once, the thin black lines showing the bottom 10 percentiles are showing up on the graph on the positive side. Now that the fastest creature has passed 20 meters, the peak of the histogram is starting to move out of range. The creatures have done it! They've passed 20 meters! Though, their improvements are slowing down. Okay, I'm going to stop it at 300 generations, because it doesn't look like the creatures are going to be getting significantly better from here on out. You have to admit, the best creature is pretty efficient at running. 22 meters? That's like 11 times better than the best creature from generation 1. As expected, the median creature and best creature are pretty much identical at this point, except for that little hiccup. And the worst creature. I mean, it looks the same, but somehow it must be different. Oh, I see why. So, how does this creature, the tetrahedron, work? Let's break down all the parts. This muscle is like a piston, contracting and expanding. Because it's the driving force pushing the whole creature along, it has to have very high strength. But muscles can't say, move left or move right, they merely contract and expand. So how do we get rightward motion? The answer, of course, is the two nodes' differing frictions. As mentioned earlier, the left node has super high friction, acting as an anchor for the piston to push off of. It's very important that the right node in front has very low friction, so that it can easily be pushed forward against the ground by the piston. Now hold on, these three parts alone aren't enough. Why? Well, when the piston contracts, the whole process will reverse, bringing the white node back in, and we're back where we started. So how do we solve this? The answer is to deactivate the anchor when the piston is contracting so the creature doesn't move back left. How do we deactivate the anchor? Simple, just lift it off the ground. No contact with the ground, no friction. To lift the anchor off the ground, we need a muscle pulling it upwards. And to have a muscle pulling it upwards, we need to have a node from above. That's this node, the anchor puller. And partly this node, the anchor puller, too. So when the piston contracts, the anchor is dragged to the average of these three muscles, which is slightly above the ground, and poof! The anchor lifts off, and the creature moves. What advantage does the tetrahedron have over the simpler, yet still effective, Dorito? I'm not exactly sure, but perhaps the anchor puller 2 provides more structural support for the anchor puller 1 to be higher in the air. Just a guess though. One more time, here's the last 300 generations of history in 7 seconds. Finally, let's do one more step-by-step -step generation just to see what the whole population looks like.
Oh my gosh, it's so homogenous, it looks like a wallpaper. But when you sort them, you can see all of the fatal mutations lying around at the bottom. Creatures missing muscles, nodes, or facing the wrong direction. You get the picture. Anyway, that, in a little over 20 minutes, is my evolution simulator. Tune in next time when the creatures will face more bumps in the road. Figurative or literal? You'll have to find out!